Hi guys, and welcome back today to uh, my first setup video. So today we're going to be talking about the setups, guys, and what I change and what I look for in making a setup. Uh, we're going to do a mid-engine car, so guys, as you know, I run the Ferrari a lot. So I felt let's start with the Ferrari first, and then what we're going to do, we're going to move on to a front-engine car and, and eventually the Porsche. But this will work with the Audi and, and basically most cars. This is just going to be a general guide of what I'm looking for. Whilst making, whilst making my setups. So let's jump straight into it. That up. I'm just gonna load the default aggressive. Okay, so first things first, tire pressures. Guys, the window is much shorter now for tire pressure. Okay, so you're aiming for maximum, on the limit maximum, 27.8 and the lowest 27.3 or maybe even 27.4, the, the window is very small. But guys, if you're at a track where you're going to be hitting the curbs a lot, like Monza, uh, Brands Hatch, you know, maybe even a little bit of Spa, maybe if you're hitting the chicane pretty hard um, on the front right as you go into the bus stop, this, this causes uh, tire pressure loss. So you need to make sure you start the race, maybe a little PSR higher, but they, uh, as you get into the race, they come into that window and they're in that window for a lot longer than starting at 27.5, 27.6, and then they're dropping down 27 flats. Because, guys, you can have the best setup in the world. You don't get the, the tire model is so good on this game and the way they've done it. If you don't have these tire pressures right, it doesn't matter what setup you've got, your car's going to feel terrible. Okay. So, let's start. I'm just going to go through the sections and tell you what I changed in my way, in my own way, and what they do. Okay. Camera. Right. Pretty simple. At short, twisty tracks, Mazzano, Brands Hatch, Zolda, you run high camber, guys, but do not run it to excess. So, in quality, yeah, no problem. You can run maximum here. Obviously, in the 2020 BOP, a little bit, it's a little bit less now, right, from, from the 2019. So, if you want, max it out. You know, some tracks like Spa, there's no need to, but this will give you a little bit more rotation, you know, just a little, you can lean on the car a little bit more. But, what i do guys in the race i will lower this a couple of clicks i would lower this because if you're doing a long race and you've got to make these tires last an hour on maximum camber especially if the track's a little bit hot the wear is going to be higher you know so make sure you you you, you come back a little bit come uh drop down a little bit um just to save them tires so that the middle part in the end of the race is not horrific for you guys you know and also guys when you start sliding as well with a higher camber you're gonna yeah, you're going to heat up the tyres, they're going to overpressure and they're going to be sliding. Okay, rear toe as well. So, Brands Hatch. So, uh, you're probably going to run, for me, around here. 1.1, 1.2. But this can depend on the heat, guys. Okay, so if you add toe, it's going to heat up the tyres a little bit more because they're a little bit more scrubbing as they turn in a little bit more. But it's going to give you more stability on the rear. So if you're struggling, right, you're coming out of a slow corner and the TC's kicking in, increase the toe. This is what this is for. But downside, if you're at a high speed track with a lot of high speed corners, the higher the toe, the more the, the car can feel unsettled, right? So Paul Ricard Monza, you're running, you're running 0 0.8, 0 0.7, you know, maybe even like around there. Just this is just in general. You're going to run lower toe because there's a lot more high speed corners right but then cars like, tracks like brands hatch you're going to run them a little bit higher just to have that because there's not so many high speed corners you want that traction out of the corner to, to get away okay also with camber high speed tracks you're going to you're going to run a little bit lower camber because higher camber guys high camber uh creates more drag you're going to be a little bit slower especially on the rear so less less camber on the rear is going to give you a little bit more top speed but guys one thing before we move on this number the omi number you never want so this is the spread the the heat across the tire okay always check this number if you have a massive outside or inside gap so never be more than 10 degrees or 10 points different okay so if this tire is 99 and this one's 68 you know you're running too much camber on the outside so you need to reduce it to make that spread even because otherwise you're gonna get massive wear on the on the outside of the tire and guys as well so, just another bit about condition before we move on. 
In colder conditions, you can get away. Especially with a Ferrari, you can run a little bit more toe on the front. Okay. And a little bit more camber to generate a little bit more heat. But in very hot conditions, you're going to have to reduce this. Because, guys, we, you, you know with these, this tyre model, if the tyres overheat, the car is undrivable. So, in hotter conditions, you need to reduce the toe and the camber a little bit to make sure, also with the ducts, to make sure you uh, you keep them tyres in check because overheated tyres, they start blistering. You're going to be losing a second a lap, maybe three quarters of a second a lap. Okay? Electronics. So, TC1, TC2, the, the, math, the, the myth of, T, of TC2. So, TC1, slow corners. Okay, so you lower the TC1 to get a better drive out of a corner. It won't kick in at low speed and it will help. It will help with, with driving out of a very slow corner like Monza Turn 1. Uh, Laguna Seca, the last corner, you lower that TC, the hairpin at Suzuka, you lower that TC to, to drive out, okay? Where would I run low TC on this on, on, on any car? Probably Paul Ricard, a little bit lower, but say Brands Hatch Zola, you're going to run a bit of a higher TC. TC2. Now, you have to sort of match it with TC1. I like 5 TC2 on the Ferrari. So this is the engine cut. This is nothing to do with the TC. Now, th this this helps obviously in the wet, very high TC, TC2, and and guys, when tires are worn. So for, for, for me, obviously in high speed corners, TC2 does help as well. But you got to remember, <sighs> higher TC2 with will create a lot more engine cut. But never really go higher, especially with a Ferrari, never go higher than five, because then you will start to lose time. And if you turn it off, the car will become very, very unstable. So I always, I'm always around this five foot sort of mark in the dryer, in the wet. I like seven to eight, and and that's that's my personal preference. I like in the so in the dry guys, I'm normally around five, dropping down to three maybe if on a quality lap, and then in the wet, I'm around seven eight, seven eight again. ABS, ABS helps guys. So. This is for locking up. Where do, where would you run? Okay, so optimal track. I'm going to be running four. This is just what I run with a brake bias. Say I like I like my brake bias around here, the 55.2 to 55.6 mark, because I like to have the car a little bit understeering and then get the rotation at the brake bias. So with the electronics, I on an optimal track I will run four, five on fast. Green will probably be six or five, depending on how green the track is. Where I would be running seven, seven or eight if it's flooded. Okay, and when the tires start to wear as well, so if I'm on a long stint or a, or I'm double stinting tires, guys, you need to run these higher, a higher bits because you're trying to look after these tires as much as possible. Okay. Fuel. Okay. Dry tires. Everyone knows how to do dry tires to wet. Um, obviously, we can't check the wet wear at the minute. Obviously, that will come. And the biggest debate of all, brake pads. So this guy's 1-1 one, one on the brake pads is the most stopping power. Not for, not 4-4, four, four. that's for simulating worn, worn brakes. So never go near them. So 1-1 one, one always for qualifying and short races, guys. Okay, the 1-1 one, one pads will last an hour. I think they've been increased. So it's an hour and 30 minutes. I think you can actually get out of them now. An hour and 20. Okay, 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two are better for very cold conditions and very long races so you can do up to 12 hours as you if you go back and watch my 24 hour race we run for 12 hours before we started we, so we changed just before the 12 hours and then at the end of the 24 hours at the end of the second stint of the 12 hours we started to have a little bit of brake failure but i think that's increased now so you'll get 12 hours out of them pad 3-3 offer only heavy rain wet so they work very well very very well in wet conditions and and very cold conditions i would say so if you're running one of if you just got a wet race run these brakes they they help with the lockups and they don't produce as much heat they work better they you know mechanical grip okay so mechanical grip anti-roll bar at the front this helps stiffen the front anti-roll bar and this will help control the, the the roll of the car as well okay so too high you're going to feel like you have tons of understeer but you need to balance the front with the rear okay so you need to find this balance 
first. So get a good turn. Like, I always, I'm around, I like 18 to 28. I'm never above or below that. That's sort of like my preference, you know, of, of where I'm at. Always 100% break power. Now, steering ratio. Steering ratio will work different for everyone's rotation. I run 720. My steering ratio is always 17 to 13. Okay. I feel like that is... That is one where I'm at. In the Mercedes, I like to run 12. Just find that so there's no lag in the wheel. Okay, so what we're going to do, guys, we're going to talk about the spring rate. Uh, with the roll bars, what I look for, what I would change, you know. Okay, so with a mid-engine car, you always seem to run a little bit stiffer on the rear. Because the engine's in the middle of the car, towards the rear, it's a lot more oversteering. You know, you have to drive the car on the rear a lot more than, say, the AMG or Lexus. So, you're always going to run these stiffer springs on the front, but you need to manage the spring stiffness by what track it is. So, a poor car, you run the car pretty soft because you want the car to squat down as much as possible. To, to get as much straight line speed. Okay. So I would go out on track. If you run the car too soft, there's gonna be a lot of roll as well. Even if you run max stiffness with the with the with anti roll bars, the car probably gonna bottom out at some point. So, but I never run maximum springs. I'm always around say 15-1, maybe 16-3 at Mazzano. At about 1200 that's that's about my 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 place of comfort you know but finding this right balance so say suzuka that would be too stiff so through the middle sector i'd hit a curb the car want to pivot round. you know the, that's how you know as well if you're running the springs too stiff guys say as you go through suzuka you hit say you go through the first sector you hit the curb and the rear feels like it's lifting round Probably the spring stiffness is a bit too stiff on the front. Bring that down one click, you know, find out what that does. Bump stop rate. Bump stop rate slows the rate of the suspension travel as well. Like a, a, a just like a tool with what it does. Bump stop range, right? This will increase turning and at high speed, this will increase the, the how much the car can squat down to the ground. So negative, like minimum bump stop range will not allow that front to go down at all. It will keep the car pretty stable um that the spring can't go into the arch so for high speed tracks i always like three or four you see at spa i probably run about four or three monza because i want i want the car to squat down as much as possible so i can get as, as much straight line speed obviously you have to balance the springs with this damper as motec we're going to go into that later but i'm just giving you a general idea of of what i'm looking for and what i change you know in a car so Rand's hatch, I'd probably, I'd probably be around a two range, try to, it's hard, really, two or three, because you still need enough roll, and you still want to be able to take curbs, but I never run zero, guys, never ever do I run zero, this middle, but also for the rear as well, so, at, so this is perfect, actually, so at Paul Ricard, you want soft rear springs to allow the rear to squat down as much as possible, even maybe invert the front. Maybe it'll go down past the front and we'll even have more straight line speed. And also a higher bump stop range, because obviously low bump stop range on the rear will decrease your straight line speed. Oh, but also there's, there is a downside. So if you increase the bump stop range and the on the front of the rear too much, you're going to allow too much roll in the car. You will not be able to stiffen up with the anti-roll bars. And this will cause oversteer, understeer, the cars will very unbalanced as you go through corners. Okay, so that's what I look for. Preload. I like around 120, 110 to 150 in, in the Ferrari. Obviously, everyone knows the Ferrari struggles with lift off oversteer. So, but what it does, high preload will give you on throttle understeer, but it will help through high speed corners. It will keep the car more stable okay but if you're having understeer issues on throttle so as soon as you get on the throttle the front's just going away i would lower this number down okay i would increase the spring stiffness on the rear and a couple of clicks of arb but also you need to balance this with the arrow as well now for, for a lot of people i'm quickly going to go through what if they have trouble with oversteer understeer what i would do so oversteer this could be one of two things. 
this could be your sprint stiffness is too stiff on the rear with say the anti-roll bar so say this is our setup right now like say this is how my ferrari setup would look say uh, like that i'll probably go up a couple of clicks here say this is our setup okay i know i'm having too much oversteer what would i do i'd look at this setup i go okay we've got real bad oversteer so i would decrease the roll on the front maybe one click of anti-roll bar reduce the rear anti-roll bar by two clicks one click of preload just to help with the on throttle understeer okay that's what i would do in mechanical grip now if that didn't work i would put it back to what we had and then i'd go to the arrow i'll go to the arrow and i would look at my on my ride height the percentage i go okay so we've got really bad understeer, understeer. maybe the front because guys I, you can really control the oversteer with the balance of the uh, of the right height so i would bring the front up one click with the changes that we made like i would go back to what we had before just to see what that what that balance would be okay so just a couple of things understeer as well the same sort of thing i would uh probably decrease the front right and the roll bar just to allow the, the pitch a little bit more i'd leave i'd leave the three increase the uh the rear anti-roll bar also look at air i maybe got one click on on the rear just to see if we can get rid of uh, a bit of understeer ride height these minimum ride heights do not work for me guys this this here does not work for me when people are running this i don't know for their setups i i can't work with that for me i always find a good balance around this mark from the 57 on the front to the 59 especially on the mid-engine cars and then around here 61 to 62 is like so for me my starting point for any setup is around here this is what i find but don't be a don't be afraid to, to try different things you know this is this here i find is the best the best balance for me it's gonna differ from 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 track to track so spa i would say this would probably be a good ride height you know maybe a little bit lower probably 57 i'll probably go with with like a nine wing or something to try brand hatch it's older you probably run a little bit higher maybe maybe 64 on the wrist like this you know so so we can take the curve so guys at mazano quick way we can uh just address this quickly mazano i was running this ride height and as i was braking say into turn one do you know as you go over the curb on the left and then i was bottoming out and i could not fix it right and what it was the the car was high enough bro the springs were a little bit too soft but they were like this and i had a little bit too much bump stop range so what was happening the car was bottoming out on the curb so what i did i decreased this down to two and it and it and it solved it and also i had to go down a couple of clicks on the rear so what this bump stop does guys if you if you go you can't see it on the on the, on the front for some reason now our setup data thing is not working but what this would do guys this it would control the bump stop right here would bring this lower here so the suspension travel couldn't travel but like you wouldn't be able to go away into the arch which means that the car wouldn't go too 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 low down and we wouldn't bottom out so that's just a general idea of of what we're looking for so guys that is it aero as well guys never run the ducks too small i've done this as far in ACR not long ago I tried to be clever I tried to run 2-1 ducks even they're pretty cool conditions and what I did I ended up blistering my tires you know absolutely destroyed the tires um, so always always guys please 2-2 two, two ducks on quality I would say for the race you want to be running 3-2 three, three, maybe even 4-3 if it's very hot okay so that that's that's our dryer what i do for the dry setup there's a bit of everything in there what i'm looking for what i do guys dampeners we are going to leave alone because i'm going to be bringing out a motex setup video but a lot of people ask me what everything does what we can do to adjust i hope this answers a few questions i hope it helps you know more setup tutorials coming out four cars what we're looking for what things do how we adjust them like I said, we're going to be bringing out my tech videos. Keep, keep an eye on this channel, guys. Hope some of this helps, okay? Thank you, guys.